In this video, we're gonna talk about making a larger bowl. I have about seven or eight pounds of clay here. I think it's important to pat it down. Make sure it's as centered as possible before you actually start centering. Get the clay wet, get your hands wet. When you're, make, when you're trying to move larger hunks of clay, you really just wanna anchor your elbow further into your hip or belly and lean in with your body weight. And oftentimes I'll go straight to coning the material. Tone it up and down a few times. If it feels good, you're ready to go. If you feel anything lumpy or any inconsistency at all, I would bring it up and down again or go back to the wedging table. This clay feels great, so I'm gonna go ahead and open the hole. Remember, I like to have my two thumbs and index finger together, fingers gliding along the back of the clay. Probably gonna leave about a half inch of material on the very bottom. This is gonna be a decent sized bowl. So I'm gonna feel like I'm ever so lightly pulling my finger up the side while I'm pulling out. Don't forget to compress the material back down. Even though I'm making a larger bowl, I still want to collar this in. Just collar the top half. What I'm doing here is compressing the rim into itself. That also recenters it. Now remember, when you're making a bowl, you have a curved bottom, so your left hand, left hand is much higher up on the inside than normal. And so I wanna really just keep it in that one position. I feel like I'm forcing my right hand under my left. Anytime I'm making a bowl, I really wanna get the height first. And then allow some trifical force to pull it out. Make sure both sides of the material are totally lubricated. I'm going to be leaning over on my thigh here at 3 o'clock. Gather up the material, move your pressure points closer together, and then simply apply pressure up. Remember, you're not really squeezing as you're moving up. You're just keeping your fingers the same distance apart. You're only really squeezing at the base. I think it's really important to note when you're making larger bowls is to slow your hands down as you get closer to the top. Notice how slow my hands are moving. Also, you really want to make sure you slow the wheel down itself or some trifical force is gonna pull this bowl all the way out and down. And that's bad.
I like to leave a nice visual termination on the top. A little thicker area as well for functional reasons. In the earlier bowl videos, I talked about being able to roll a marble back and forth on the inside without it hitting any harsh transitions. And that almost applies to any bowl shape. I'll use a chamois or a cut piece of plastic for the rim. Remember, you just hold it with the index fingers on top and have the trailing end touch the material and compress down. Get rid of the excess material if you can. This is going to help the bowl dry more evenly. This bowl is finished on the wheel. I'm going to go ahead and dry this and we'll trim the foot later and have a look at a finished product. Hey folks, my big bowl looks perfectly leather hard. I get the question all the time, how do you know if it's perfectly leather hard? The answer is if you can't shake the rim back and forth, it does not distort the form. And if I can handle the piece, also if I can just make a, a really shallow mark with my finger or needle tool, it's ready to go. So we want a nice clean wheel head, we need to, we need to trim this pot. And you'll see a lot of potters, they'll just come up to the pot and they'll just simply just tap it one or two taps on the side and it's centered and ready to go. But that's really frustrating for beginners. Um, so I tell my students to do a few different things to help you center. First things first, there are machine lines on the wheel head itself. Try to put the rim right on or close to one of those lines all the way around. And then give it a slow spin and see how it goes. Next, anchor your finger right around five or six o'clock, wherever you're comfortable. And you can see there's a fluctuation in distance. There's about a half inch of fluctuation, so what I need to do is stop the wheel when it's touching my finger. And if it's fluctuating half an inch back and forth, I need to push it away from me one quarter inch, half that distance. And you can see I got lucky, I, I did it in the first try. It may take you 15, 20 minutes, and then, you know, it's, it can be very frustrating, but it's super important to trim the pot while it's very centered. Once you have the pot centered, you need to lug it down with some wet material. Just make some coils. Apply pressure down so you don't throw it off center. And then smash the coil into the corner of the wheel head and the pot. Three or four coils should be plenty. Certain forms you want to put a coil all the way around. Trimming at a high rate of speed is going to help you get things done. You can use different types of trimming tools. You can use uh, the classic pear trimming tool. You can use the small trimming tool. And one of these basic trimming tools that come in the kit. I think it's really important to get good at trimming. There's tons of excess clay here. What I want you to do at first is go ahead and give yourself a target line. You can see those two lines are going to represent my foot ring. All of this other material here and this material here is going to be gone. And I know we have a nice curve on the inside of this bowl. And so I can go ahead and be relatively aggressive and start trimming this material away. I like to hold the trimming tool in the palm of my hand. Support right with your index finger right below the blade. 
is going to be pointing right towards your belly. You're going to be trimming at 3 o'clock. Support the tool. It needs to be a very stiff and rigid. And just by applying pressure right at 3 o'clock, you're going to see these really nice trimming trimmings come off. If the trimmings stick on the way around, it's too wet. If, they, if it's really powdery and coming off in lots of little pieces, it's almost too dry. Get used to using different parts of the tool. Some tools have a round edge. That can be really nice for people. Some people like just to hold the tool in one spot. That can get a lot done quickly. Other people like to take the corner of the tool and just work their way up, almost like they're doing a pull. Remember, throwing is just, is just half the form. Trimming is the second half, and it's super important to trim bowls. On bigger bowls, sometimes I do like to use the, the larger trimming tools. Remember, when you're trimming, all you're doing is following the form that you've created on the inside. So my idea here is just to go ahead and trim all the way to my original lines I created. And now I need to get this area out. So this is the middle. I want to have the tool on the 3 o'clock side only. I never want the tool on both sides of the rotation. When I'm trimming the top of the bowl, I really want the butt end of this tool to be pointing towards my chest and I will also hold it like a pencil. This puts the tool at a better angle. I'll go to my desired line and I'll just take the corner of the tool and press down. Hold the tool very tight or it might get away from you. What you're doing your trimming is really minimizing the amount of material that's touching the table. It also helps the form go through the kiln, through the shrinking process in the kiln. Until you're used to trimming and you've done it thousands of times like I have, you really want to go ahead and when, you're, when you feel like you're close to done, you want to go ahead and put a straight edge across here and you can see that I have at least an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch uh, for the bottom. This is good for glazing reasons. Remember, the, the form is curved on the inside. All I'm doing is following that form on the outside. If this foot was gone, this would just be a perfect dome, just like the shape on the inside is a perfect concave shape. I hope these techniques help you learn how to trim. I'm gonna go ahead and trim the other pots I made yesterday.